traffic, street traffic. Uh, New Hyde Park is heavy, Covert relatively heavy, and then as you go further, there's Chew and Mineola, Willis and uh, Main, then Willis, and then there's Urban Avenue in uh, the hamlet of Newcastle, you know, not too far from uh, Westbury. And then, uh, oh, School, School, School Street is before Westbury. that, actually, which is right off the Westbury Station. So, <coughs> yeah, no, there's, look, it's, I live in one of those villages, and I hear the horns, and they, you know, they, you got to remember, there's something like, there's four horns for a train that's passing, even if it's, uh, you know, the gate, the gate goes down. So in addition to the gate being down, which is a traffic issue, mm -hmm. Too long and then there's an environmental long. issue from that, because you have cars idling, and but then you have the noise pollution from the, the horns and the bells. So, you know, it does, it, 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 it's, it, it's a, it solves a big issue. It's complicated, though, and we're, as we're coming, as DOT is developing plans and options, we're really looking to, uh, you know, I improve the movement of vehicles and pedestrians who are walking to the stations, but also, uh, you know, make sure there's no uh, or limited amount of property impacts. And then during construction, we're going to study how we divert the traffic because if we want to do this quickly, meaning we don't want people to have to live through construction for a very long period of time, we we would consider, and again, this is with village feedback, consider closing. Uh, a crossing while we're doing the work. So if we're, when we do covert, divert traffic to New Hyde Park Road, 12th Street, and as we go down the road. That will, that means it can be done more quickly, but it's, that's something we'll, we'll work with the community, because it might be something that they're not inclined to, or it, it, it might not work for them. So, um, so that's, but look, the, the, just, I think everybody knows that why we want to do this as far as the MTA and the railroad, um, it, one of the things that that jumps out, and, and it's it's I think it's very important. I think others do too. But we can't have a, a railroad operating in one direction for portions of the day. We have in the morning. There's only one train. Uh, you know, there's it's about like an hour, forty five minutes mm -hmm. to two hours where it's dead time. And you guys, I think we you know we all know that the the train that does come out from Penn Station. You'd be shocked at the numbers in that train. It's a you know, they're carrying passengers. There's a there is a demand, and a lot of times demand is driven by availability. And if you're not offering the service, mm -hmm. of course people aren't going to use it. And we do get that feedback. It's like, oh, nobody wants to go that direction. Oh, yeah, yeah. We do, and we got I, I took a reverse for on the a long time. Uh, yes. Yeah, and, and the question used to be, what's so reverse about this? Yeah. Yeah. It's two direction. Like yes. that's I don't even say reverse. It's like why does it have yeah, to be no, this, well, this was yeah. back about yeah. twelve years well, ago. And people yeah. would say, what's the I don't, first? like, if I have to go to Mineola, I, 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 won't, I, I don't even look, because I know. But I, there were the other people who I knew who were, who, who were commuting out to Long Island, and they said, you know, I wish there was a train. Yeah. But I'm just driving. And if you drive on the, if you drive out there on the LIE or the Meadowbrook, it's crowded going yeah. east in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's heavy. Yeah, and right now people aren't even looking. I mean, like you said. Yeah, they know. Well, you, you know, look once, know. and you yeah. give up, and you say, yeah. I, I, I I don't want to get there at 7.30 in the morning. I was going to a Hicksville meeting, and uh, it was a 5.38 train or be late. You know, it's like, okay, that's, and I'm, I'm kind of a transit, you know, I want to take the train. It's, uh, and so it's, it's not an option right now. And then the opposite way, we get more and more, and you saw the numbers from last month, uh, or this month's meeting, more and more traffic in the off-peak or, or in the shoulders of the peaks. And uh, we have people going into the, if you look at the platforms at, at New High Park, Mineola, in the evening there's a couple of trains that are going against traffic. Those are, they have, they're pretty full. And why? It's like people are, first of all, they're working different jobs, but it's not just work. It's, it's you know, leisure, they're going to a show, they're going to dinner, they're going to an Islander game, they're going to a Ranger game. Makes sense. So it, it, this will allow us to have that two-directional traffic on a line that supports 40% of all traffic. It's it's significant. It's especially significant if you use the railroad. A lot of times we'll get, we've, we've been going out to meetings, and I, you know, listen, I'm not critical of it, but people will look at you, and I don't take the railroad, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't, but, you know, it matters for people who take it, and future, you know, I think there's a study, I think it was University of Michigan on younger people, they're not running to the DMV on their 16th, 17th birthday. They're not getting driver's licenses right away. They're not looking to buy a car. They're not looking to take on the cost of a car. They're looking for mass transit options. They're going to go where mass transit's available. And if you don't have something that's 
that's going to fit the schedule of the people we want. We're trying to, you know, keep here in the region. They're going to go somewhere else, and that's going to be a big loss. It could be personally, you know, you, you want your family to be close to you, or it's 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 to the industries and to the businesses that they're not going to have that talent. So uh, it's important the two directional. It's also look at delays. It's you, know, you have a third track. It's obviously going to be something that's easier to to uh, to alleviate delays. Um, so, you know, these are the, and, uh, and then with east side access, this is a, a major, uh, it allows us to take the full benefit of east side access um, that I think, you know, otherwise it just wouldn't, I don't think the return. Yeah, they've been saying this for a long oh, time. Okay. Yeah, no, we, 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 we know the drill, yeah, but yeah, what, yeah. do we have, do we even have a, a schedule yet on this project? So what happens is the schedule that we do have is for this first year, which is basically the study, and then during this period of time over the summer, we would hope to come out with what we believe is possible construction schedules and uh, in the in the in the final EIS, so that we can we can get out there if, once we get a record of decision. So it's how long will it take once it's twenty twenty one is when we start because there's no unless well I guess you could speed things up if you're in a hurry, but there's no money right now. Well, to yeah, you need to, there you have to have amendments or something. So I don't. So much really. I mean, look, the governor has made a commitment to funding, and yes, we love that. And he's and he has. I know. And look, it's it's uh, and and when that when we get to that point, it's that's that has to become. You know, that, that <coughs> obviously gets becomes more urgent. But right now, we have the funding for the for the EIS, which is you know, an important step, obviously, and, and, and required. So. Um, so the, the the scoping meetings are going to be probably late May. If we can fit it in, or early June also. So this is where we'll need your guys' kind of support too. And that is going to be an open community-wide meeting. Yes. Yes. There'll be two. There'll be at least two. You're going to have at least two of them. Okay. We, Are you also working on the Penn Station deal, or just third track? I'm not. Not yet, anyway. I'm not. <laughs> but I might get pulled in. I'll see. Okay. But I'm not doing that. Yeah. I think Justin Burnback is doing some problems. We have obviously some concerns and questions. Issues we got here. Okay. And Bill Wheeler is working on it. So. Um, and then I'm trying to think if there's anything. Oh, and then Bill after. about transit service. That's good. Well, so, I mean, so some of the stuff about Penn Station seems to be unrelated to transit service. Spring, like, you know, uh, uh, May, June. Mm -hmm. Then probably August we'll have a, a draft EIS statement. And then another set of uh, public hearings like in, in, mm -hmm. in September. And we hope to have a decision by December, by the end of the year, have a decision that this can move forward. So it's a very aggressive schedule. But what would be the next stage if it gets approved like that? Well, bid out for construction, and, yeah. and, and there's two components. I mean, you obviously have the great crossings, and DOT wants a very aggressive schedule on that. Um, It'll be going on simultaneously. So we would, uh, the idea at... So, the, the, so is it money now for, for design? Uh, yeah, the, the, well, for the for this part, the study, and then as we get later in the summer, it, I mean, you have to have the money before we go out. But we, is it great crossing elimination money? It's interesting. I, I remember it years ago being <coughs> like a state... DOT. State DOT money, not MTA money. So, not that I want to take what you say and extend it out, but you seem to imply that that we could move ahead with some of this project starting the next few years using state DOT money outside the MTA's capital program to eliminate the crate crossings first. Yeah, I, that hasn't been determined, but you know the commitment there is to... You planted the, the idea in my head. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, well, DOT will be leading the... Uh, well, oh, okay. We are the lead agency uh, for the project, but they we're working with them on the great... And then the MTA could so. come in and, and when that stuff's done in 2021 and finish the project with our track. Okay. Well. Okay. So it's, uh, but we'll keep you updated throughout. Uh, there's a website that is out there, uh, modernli.com. Well, we're part of the coalition. Right track coalition. Right? coalition. Yeah. So I mean, the, the support is, is, we're very grateful for it because uh, it's, you know, sometimes you're only, you're going to hear, you're obviously going to hear some voices and. Uh, but it's uh, you know this is an important transportation project, so it's it's greatly appreciated um, support or guidance or listen if we're missing something um, you know it's it's uh, you're going to see you know make sure get scoping documents and everything like that once it comes out which we would we're expect. Not, we're not shy. 
first week. I know. <laughs> John, I know, be, John, being a, uh, a Long Island of born and raised, and uh, I think it's a great project. And wonder, you know, what what has taken so damn long? One item that I have, since you are the governor's representative, our group has seen this cartoon before. But just something to consider while you're doing the scoping, okay? Yeah. Is the infrastructure, <laughs> okay? It's yeah. the infrastructure that goes along, okay? Put that in the minutes, would you please? Um, yeah. uh, it's the infrastructure, okay? The switching. The communication network that should yeah. go along with that project. Eleven different towers to communicate, so you're going to expand the railroad without a plan to centralize control. Expand Penn Station, you're going to bring more trains into Penn Station without expanding it. That's what I'm going with this, okay? Yeah. In addition to the third rail. Okay? Thoroughly, it's a great idea, long time, it should have been done 25 years ago. But bring the infrastructure along with it, so you don't wind up with total congestion. Understood. That's and why I gave that order. Yeah, okay, if you yeah, pass it on to the I governor, I would completely appreciate that. Wow. Yeah, I have extra copies with you. On Owen's point, this is the only time out this year. I have more of you. But, excuse me. We had questions about trains coming into Penn Station and being announced that the last call on the train's not even in yet. We had issues like oh, that. Oh, it's a very quick. And I understand. Well, yeah. what we found out like this year is that they can't visually actually see the trains coming. Um, excuse me, it's Maureen. Um, what? I just want to make an observation here. I've been on council for a decade, and um, I think this council knows more about this project than probably 99% of the residents and elected officials on Long Island. Um, you know, one of the problems that is that I hear is that it's a changing story all the time about what's required and what's not. And that starts to raise questions about who's got the right information here. I mean, for me to now hear that no residences are to be involved is almost incredulous given, you know, what we and others have been told over and over and over again. And so when you have these kind of major projects, which we have long supported, um, you know, we're, we're getting too much information too late on what the plans are. Uh, I'm glad this uh, presentation happened today, but it should have happened a long time ago. Um, but at the same time, you know, an explanation about, well, wow, how did all of a sudden now no residents are involved when that was, you know, the storyline for why it can't happen, what it's going to do. Like, where does the miraculous land come from? Um, that's going to do it, that. and, I'm, uh, and, I'll, and I'm not asking for those answers right now, but I'm just saying that, you know, getting yeah. these projects and Excuse me, Maureen. Uh, Maureen, Ma Mark just wants you to know that we have the answers. Well, he's just so, here so, yeah, so, so, with the answers. So, uh, no, that's fine. When I'm, no, no, no. I, I, what I'm counseling here is that if you want public buy-in to what you're trying to do, you need to clean up the storyline on what is, is going to take place because, it, especially for those communities that are affected, it keeps changing. And so they're not so trustful um, of what the railroad thing, what the NCA thing, maybe what the governor, because you sent through a lot of governors. Um, and so that needs to really. Uh, get shored up because it, it, it's a shifting landscape, uh, to say the least. So th this is John. It, so in, in a nutshell, it's it. Uh, you're right. It's shifting and it has changed, but it's changed. We believe in the right direction, and it's changed because of community concern and us. You know, the governor demanding that the, the MTA go back to the drawing board, come up with a plan that has less impact, and 
and what was at one time a, a, a project that would have taken, I think, 250 properties because it was, it, it's, not, yeah. it's not that the right-of-way grew or shrunk, it's that it's how you build it. And if you're just building it along the southern side, just adding a track south, for, and then for, for 10 over, I think it was 11 point something miles from Queens Village to Hicksville, what's changed is the project is shorter, why? Because they're using Hempstead just to, 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 to carry over that on that Hempstead line into the third track. So you get to start at the, uh, at the easternmost part of Floral Park. So that, that has reduced the impact. The second thing that's reduced the impact dramatically was instead of, uh, you know, listen, we all have a bottom line in money, but in this case it said, look, let's not just be wed to building a track directly down one side. You have to go where the space is. And... There's sometimes there's space to the south, which is generally all the way up to Mineola, and then there's space to the north beyond Mineola, and there's some space back and forth. So there's there's it's a little trickier engineering wise. It's probably a little more expensive, but it it lessens the impact where we are required to take properties. The other thing we've done is around station areas, we've, we're configuring it slightly differently so that we can gradually move the trains in after they get through, say, Roslyn Road or Mineola Boulevard, where we have existing structures that carry the third track. That was another area where we thought we would need properties, and now we don't. The governor announced this at a press conference at the Long Island Association. We put out a press release on it. It's, it's significant, and I understand your point that this is a changing project, but you know, I, I would just stress that it's changing in the right direction. And we're trying to do as... Okay. I agree with you 100%, but I'm cautioning that, it, you know, the first it's about this, then it's about that. You know, the, the, the messaging on it, like, you know, the commuters, the 200,000 plus commuters and the, the two 150,000 daily riders could care less about economic development as a message. We want reliable service. You know, and you talk about young people and keeping them in the region. Well, you try and get the millennials of Long Island to commute. They won't do it. They don't want anything to do with going back and forth, you know, from Nassau and Suffolk County into Manhattan uh, because it's not reliable. Well, it, you know, look. Wait. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, the the point is make the train more reliable. We all want that, and anything less is is a problem. The second yeah, thing is you, you see, but this is what I'm saying. You're, you're talking about you know getting young people, you know, to, uh, two way commuting and uh, two way transportation. I'm just it, it, you, there are major issues related to this project that. The messaging has to get right, or, you know, or else people will be, you know, they're, they're not going to care about it. And, uh, you know, and they've heard so many different stories, just like East Side Access. Like, you know, the demand for transportation up into the Grand Central area, when all commercial development that's major is happening on the west side of New York. You know, so that argument is well, Okay. I mean, there's, uh, I, you know, there's, they're stripping down a building right above, uh, right next door to Grand Central off, off Vanderbilt. And, uh, that's going to be massive, and I think I, I, I count that as. I'm well aware. Of it. That's major I'm development. Well so look, I, I get it. I, I'm through the patterns of the transportation commute uh, into Manhattan. Right? Now all developments on West Side and downtown. You know, one building above Grand Central will not justify Eastside access. But you, you've, so, been in, you've been in the communities, you're telling the changes, right? You've been yeah, we're, no, we're very clear about it. <coughs> We've had over 60 meetings so far. And 60 with meetings. the villages, there's been multiple meetings. We start, you know, meeting with chambers of commerce, school districts, you know, civic groups. Right, and, and, and you're meeting with us today. Think about it. We've had 60 meetings, and we're 61. Um... You know, I'd asked the question before was about when the trains come in, you couldn't even see them. Yeah. Um, so that was an issue that Owen had brought up. Um, so the fact that you can't even visually see a train coming into the station. I was surprised at that. So um, in, in, into Penn State. Right. Let me just say, well, his view is that we have to not just build the third track, but we have to make sure that when the trains are coming oh, in, that it's, it's, it's also on the, on, on the narrow tracks. 
iPhones now, like 15, 16, and 17. Yeah. Train gets called. People wait for the train. Yeah. The train comes in, finally. It's a little late, okay? Yeah. And people can't get off the train. And it just takes one little firecracker and look out. A safety issue. Now, that said, the train caller, that's what we found out, the train caller doesn't, can't even see the track. It's got to be. Visual cameras, I mean, they aren't so there. We, we have sent a lot of the train <coughs> office okay. going out, just saying we are fully supportive of this project. Oh, yeah. But please keep in mind the, the full infrastructure of okay. the yeah, train. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, it's a full I mean, look, I've seen uh, the, the videos of uh, when there's a, a delay at Penn Station. Oh. And it's, but no, but it's incredible. Like you, you can, you, the cameras that are focused there, and you, you look down, and you're doing work in, in an office on the rail because they'll have the camera. And you, look, and you know instantly because the, the crowd just it builds, and it's not, builds. like you were saying, it's not over the course of a half hour. It's, it's three and a half minutes. But yeah. it's I mean, better just, to be, it's better to have yeah. the crowd in Penn Station well, yeah, itself and then they, rather than on the platform. Yes. The platform, because the train, first of all, isn't there. No, yeah. So it's coming in, and some freaking idiot just take, just pushes, and... You're going into the train. Yeah. Trying to run you over. Well, safety. I mean, and they, that, they, that just I mean, you, very probably, you know the old. I mean, they did, now they they have safety measures in place where the first call of police and they're there and keeping people out of pen. I mean, there was. I mean, I've I've been there where nobody was keeping them out and right. there was, and they just keep going. It's five forty-five and people are going down and down and there's nowhere left to go unless you go walking in the tunnel. So it's it's uh, look it's it's a, it's, a, it's gotten. I, I've it's been interviewing so long, I've learned that when there's a, 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 a delay, a snafu, something like that, and you go to a and h and shop for a camera, or go have dinner, and come back in a couple That's hours. That's right, yeah. Do you ever go That's how I saw Roger uh, Waters in, the, uh, in, in his uh, the wall show. <laughs> Went over to Penn Station, uh, the uh, yeah. Madison Square Garden, he was in there, so bought a ticket. There you go. You don't make the run for Atlantic Terminal? Because the first, no, I, I'm in <laughs> port. He's oh, okay. Yeah. And the first train you see some out, people run the first the train out, you won't get on anyway. So yeah. why bother? Yeah. But that's from years and years and years of learning. The hard way. A lot of people don't do that. They get down, they push and they push and they push. For yeah. what? Yeah. Then you sit stand all the way home. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I guess the problem is we know it's it's not sexy to do that kind of stuff, and these projects are. Yeah. But we just we just really want to make sure that all of it's incorporated and put right. out. And if you're going to be making major investments now in the railroad, which we're thrilled with, we want to make sure that those investments include the everyday stuff that may not make the headlines, but are really important. Right. And are very important, I think, for the long run growth of the railroad. Well, the earlier is you bring in more trains to uh, Penn Station, we, where are people going to go? Something. In the uh, just you know kind of like what's the next thing on this project so that you you be on the lookout for and we'll obviously be in touch is the uh, the May early May scoping document but it will also you know especially interested in this uh, group is uh, um, we will look at travel patterns uh, what we think are the uh, ridership future future numbers um, so they'll, what they'll do is usually pick. Two years, so you have a not not no build, build build with east side access. So it's built. It's similar to what they did in east side access, where they're trying to anticipate what the trap, what the um, but, the ridership growth will be. So um, and 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 then other studies that they're going to look into. Will be so the issues cool. we discussed before you came in the room is and it's it's, it's part of ridership numbers for the future <clears throat> are are the fares. Yeah. And we're on the fare increase next year, and the people that are further east in our Concord area are getting hit with fare increases that you're going to lose those. You're building a hub in Rock Concord, you're going to lose their riders, but they can't afford to take the train. Yeah. So these are issues that all have to be incorporated in the future so idea of the plan. We, we would like, so though, if, if, if it's possible to put it in that first scope document, just mention it about the infrastructure needs for the increasing infrastructure so right away it gets attention. Not wait for the next, but not wait for the next scope document. Make this first one say the infrastructure needs to be improved. That's why I gave you the. No, that's that's you know, those two, those two. No, I mean, look, they have to look at they they, they have they have to look at substations, all all these uh, switches along this uh, where they go. 
Obviously, around Mineola with the Oyster Bay coming in, that's a very complex uh, place. And then also at Polo Park, Park parking, parking associated with what are the new needs? Are they going to change? Uh, if you run more reverse trains, is that going to change the uh, tra traffic and patterns? So, right. and parking needs. Parking, sure. Uh, so, look, it's it's a there's a lot of work in this project. It's and I see the people I work with them. DOT is working very hard, and and and, and, and the engineers are working very hard, and the okay. consultants. So, but um, just make sure that cartoon gets to the governor. Yeah. I have my spies up there, so I'll make sure he knows. I test him on Sam. He, uh, yeah, he's um, taking a cut. You know, he'll talk about them MTA, and he had some line about them recently, so he, he might get a laugh out of it. Uh, any questions else? Anybody else? Anybody? Jerry, any questions? Jerry? Jerry, what? And we'll, we'll come back, you know, whenever, or if there's someone who is uh, specific to engineering. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Appreciate Thank you. you. Once more, come over now. Hector, because Hector will throw them out. He will. He's, he's, um. Did anybody bring up the fact of the smoke alarm in the control center? I had a bag. No, that was never ever called. Don't talk about your wife like that. Uh, yeah, that's the question we have. We're going to have a special view right for it. That they said was safe. And I think Mark Young, Mark Young, they should have done one now. Yes, there's a, there's a backup, there's a backup control center. But I, I, I hope that engineer that was going to go away, that was going to go away. Basically, the fire department is going to go away when that thing collapses. All right, let's, 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 let's continue on so we can finish up, guys. It's going to be years. Thanks. Nice to see you. Uh, we'll see you around. Take care. Bye-bye. We, we did Bye -bye. mobile ticketing, right? We did that for our side already. Not good. Okay. Uh, MTA fair here. Oh, we, have start, we have to start discussing um, our position. I think that we should be sending out a letter they early. Came, they came back and said it's a rush. I would. I would. I would. Just give me a second. I want to bring up, um, you know, we're going to have fair hearing hearings again next year. Right. And we're always at the very end complaining about where they choose and what they do when they have you. I'd like us to be ahead of the grade and make recommendations. So it's not an easy thing because we need to be, you know. Is anybody still on the phone? Still people on the phone? Maureen, are you on the phone? Yeah, I am. So I would like yeah, us. I am. I would like us to discuss, you know, our suggestions early, and then we can send a letter to them where we think that the hearing should be held. And again, we want to push the fact that we don't want multiple hearings on, on the same night so that board members have right. to split themselves up and not here. I think we should take a position in a letter. We should send it out, I think, before the summer. Yeah, so, <laughs> you get to skip them, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I just give some thought as to locations and NASA and stuff. I know they've been doing just one county recently. I think we should ask them to do both of them having five county ones. Um, and just give give thought for maybe the next meeting uh, as to locations that may be good there near transportation. I don't know. So I have a thought. Would it be something, and I, have, and I don't even know the feasibility of this, but there's always hearings going on pertaining to um, the buses. And to have bus and train hearings at the same time and location would save commuters a double trip. You know, they're, 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 diff they're different uh, entities. Oh, I know they're different entities. Yeah, they're different entities, entities, up there. Up yeah, they're different entities but, but the same purpose. People who are using the train, they also be using but the bus. The, and the, timing, the timing is different. Yeah, so, isn't uh, it? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm just tossing it out. I want ideas, so I'm just tossing it out. You know, you know, send us emails. I you have know, For instance, I have students over at the college that are trying to deal with their time schedules of trains coming into Ronkonkoma and taking the bus to the college. Gary. That's where he was. That's where he was. I heard him leave before. I think he left. I think he, he came, came back. He came back. Um, also, we want we want to set up a uh, some kind of working group on the uh, issue of on-time performance and how it's measured and maybe changes we have. Is anybody willing to step up and, and take uh, to take care of it? To discuss, we're always discussing on-time performance and how right. it's how how it's come about and how and what the stats and whether they're real and whether they're not real. 
the five minutes and 59 seconds, the rule, all of that stuff. We, at some point, we discussed coming up with some suggestions. And but you're looking for something who takes a regular train at a regular time, I'm going to presume. I'm looking, no. to, yeah, I'm looking yeah, for somebody yeah, who's willing to head up the group staff everybody. and whoever wants to be on it. I don't mind clocking in whenever I'm on it. That's easy. No, I want to that. I want someone to head up a group to, to review the. Review the Is someone calling? No. Hello? Hello? No one's calling. Please. No. Hi, I just want someone to ask for me. Sorry about that. Matt put somebody asked you. Oh, that was Matt. Anyway. Um, Mark, it, it's yeah. Maureen. Yeah. You know, this on time performance thing, I mean, we need data that. That gives us a better insight into really, if we do factor it. You know, last Absolutely. year, Brian and I, um, you know, kept this a diary of, like, yeah, you know, so when we arrived, you know, mm -hmm. on time versus within their, their um, guidelines, uh -huh. and then we were a little late. And, you know, I had more than 40% of my trips in and out. Mm -hmm. Late, and yet you know you you would you attach the on time performance stats to that you know a very different story. Right. So you know I mean I find it hard for us to start a process without there being a commitment from TCAC staff to do some preliminary legwork on this. Well, I mean the data is. If, data are out there, Marina. We just have to know what to do with them. I mean, we have the, well, the, the railroad it, the railroad puts out late train data. Uh, you know, they, no, I, I guess the quote-unquote late train data, but the, you know, I mean, I've raised this point with Brian that we need data to know for a long time. And so, but I need data, not their data. Well, why, why, why would we not use their data? Because the passenger or the, the fellow person riding the train it is the time he picks it up, the time he gets off the train, not not when the train comes into the station or where, where how far along it is right. when it trips whatever that wire is. You know, it could be another five, eight minutes before you actually the doors open. Right, but that but, but the train's on time. That's not oh. available. That 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 data isn't available unless you want it. It should be. It should be in very small numbers. It should be. Because that to me is more useful than than. Uh, it's not unless we want unless we're talking about the survey at ourselves. Well, the other well, the other data that we're missing here is Maureen's 100 percent right because there's another step in the process here where you have to think about the riders that are, have to do a train transfer or inconvenience to, to get to their other locations. And I don't think that data even exists. No, what's the point? That's no, you have to, to, to make a model. You have to make a model and say so many people get you know, get off and transfer. If they're if you're late, late five minutes, they're going to miss their train and be late 20 minutes. 